It is recording. Okay, uh, well, first I should start with my name, right? Uh, Rafael B. Acosta Miranda, and yours is Catherine. Mm -hmm. And yeah. uh, we are here to discuss because we have uh, gotten together and we are going to discuss uh, our project on electric vehicles and personal or for mass transit. But we're going to concentrate, I guess, a little bit more on the uh, personal vehicles, which are the most that are out there, I guess. Uh, uh, just like uh, uh, the gas engines, there are several, several types of electric vehicles. Uh, they're also known as EVs. And we're going to discuss a little bit about what types of uh, EVs there are and uh, their advantages and disadvantages. Uh, Electric vehicles are either all electric vehicles, that means that they operate only on electricity, or they can be also uh, what they call uh, plug-in hybrid electric vehicles, which run on electricity and uh, gasoline. Uh, the advantages and disadvantages of the electric vehicles, well, let me go back a little. Uh, the electric vehicles, the AEVs, all electric vehicles, they only use one source of power, and that's electricity. Uh, their range, their range can go to uh, somewhere around 80 miles to 100 miles with one charge. Uh, there are some uh, luxury models that can go farther than that, of course, but the, they can go up to like 250 miles uh, in one charge. But of course, they're going to cost more. Right. Uh, charge an AEV, it could take up to 30 minutes on a fast charge or depending on your charging method. There are, there are three types of charging methods, and I have them here, and I'll uh, read them real quick. Uh, charging level one is the method that you can just plug it into an uh, 110 outlet, uh, probably from your, your, most likely from your house or even from your work. But this is the most slowest method of charging, and it will take uh, somewhere around two to five uh, miles of charge per hour. So to just do five miles, it would take an hour to charge for that five miles. Uh, level two with this method, you can charge an AAV uh, through a uh, 240 volt uh, system either residential or 208 volt from a commercial. Uh, uh, it requires a little bit more equipment and uh, for a faster charge, but it can deliver 10 to 20 miles of charging per hour. So you get a little bit more for less time. Okay? Then you have the DC fast charge. Uh, this method, you can charge an AV. Uh, through a 480 volt AC input. It requires a specialized, a highly specialized, highly powered equipment too. So this is going to bring up the cost a little bit more so that you can get that extra faster charge. But if you look at it, it, it can charge uh, 60 to 80 miles in 20 minutes, which well, is I, a big difference. I actually found a really interesting uh, podcast by an economist in Germany. And she has been specifically studying the idea of how much electric batteries cost against traditional engines. And one of her points was that uh, the faster you charge the battery, the longer the overall lifetime will be if you're not doing a low and slow charge. And so she was talking about um, maybe not so much changing how we charge it, but putting the charges at places like grocery stores or movie theaters, places where you're going to be able to leave them plugged in longer or your workplace, but they can stay there for a long time and it still doesn't disrupt your every day. Nice. Yeah. yeah. That's interesting. Uh, other than that, that's the, the uh, three levels of charging that I've found for the uh, AVEs. Same. Uh, AEVs. <laughs> <laughs> These uh, letters here. But, uh, and then, uh, the second uh, type of electric vehicle is the plug-in hybrid, hybrid electric vehicles. Uh, these 
vehicles run somewhere around 40 to 60 miles on the charge. And once that charge is gone, it converts into a uh, gasoline motor. So the, the advantages of this is that uh, if you're going on a long trip, you can uh, do this in this car because it'll convert into a, a gasoline engine and you can continue to, to uh, drive down the road. But uh, the other advantage of this is that uh, while that gasoline engine is running, it, it is also charging your batteries. So you don't really need an, an external so source to uh, get that battery going. Yeah, and I uh, saw that I saw that both both types also use regenerative braking. Yes, that's correct. They do you use that regenerative braking. I have no idea how that works. It's pretty cool. It's pretty interesting. <laughs> yeah, it blows me away when you just brake and it comes you know, it gives you that extra push there or whatever, you know? But uh uh that's basically the two types of uh, uh electric vehicles that I found. Uh there's some other, you know, like like everything else. There's some other uh, 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 kinds, but they they go into those two. But those are the two main uh, sources that I found. Uh, the advantages of the and the disadvantages of the EVs. Uh, I'll start with the advantages. Uh, uh, they are more environmentally friendly. Uh, EVs do not have an exhaust system, so they don't do not create a, a, They create zero emissions. Uh, Gas-powered cars are, we know, that are the uh, largest contributors to greenhouse buildup in the air's atmosphere. Uh, electric cars can contribute to clean and uh, clean air and a healthier planet. Uh, the next one is uh, electric is cheaper than gasoline. It usually uh, compares to like a third of what gasoline costs. I don't know. Did you did you find anything else that's maybe cheaper than that? Or? Um, I so I was I found something from out of the Idaho National Laboratory, mm -hmm. and according to their study, they found that operating cost of a mile traveled in an electric vehicle can be three to five times less than a mile in a gasoline powered. Yeah. Well, they're, they're, your sources and my sources are more or less in the same. Okay. They're in the same picture. Mine's are like a third or something like that. So, but I, I guess they were doing it by how amount of electricity is used compared to a gallon of gasoline. Right. And that's how they got their uh, their comparison. Uh, another advantage is that it uses uh, less maintenance. I guess it's because uh, uh, basically in a in a uh, gasoline engine, there's a lot of moving parts and there's a lot of friction and everything in, in it they get destroyed a lot faster than in an electric car, which is hardly no moving parts. Plus you don't have to use oil to, you don't have to change oil and stuff like that, you know, that, or any uh, lubricants uh, in, in these, uh, in these engines. Uh, so your maintenance is less. Uh, I, I'm, I'm wondering if the tires are, it's a better run on the tires too and everything since they, they I don't know that maybe they might not be uh, too, hard on the tires being that they're more gentle on the road or something um, I, i'm not sure you know i guess but it would depend on how those brakes work too <laughs> <laughs> exactly okay uh they are very quiet and they are so quiet that there has been some legislation in the u.s that uh they want to put noise making systems in these cars so that the pedestrians can, oh, can, uh, yeah, because they're so so quiet. You're, you're just walking out to the street and you don't hear the car coming. Oh my see? goodness! So they want to put like a noise making like a car engine in these things because of this uh, problem. But uh, that's one of the advantages, especially if you're in the city and you have these cars. Well, you know, it's not not they don't make too much. They don't make noise at all. You know, uh, I, speaking of that, um, when I was looking for, I was kind of looking for case studies. To see uh -huh. who had already been using them, and I live pretty close to Washington D.C., and it turns out that in 2018, D.C. bought 14 100% electric buses to wow. run their circulator route. And um, you know, like you're saying, in a, in a big city like that, sometimes you know, sometimes them being that quiet might be an issue. But um, to to work on reducing the noise pollution of such a dense urban area would be incredible they're hoping to buy 18 more 
in the near future and they want to eventually go to all electric buses for their entire fleet. Nice. Yeah. Nice. It was right. nice to see someone actually taking steps. They are. And uh, that's one of the things I'm going to uh, uh, touch on, on on the later note is, is the uh, it's not being put out there. The advantages and disadvantages of these of these cars. Uh, I don't think they're giving it enough promotion for the people to know what what's out there. Right. Yeah. I, I was saying right. Although there are a lot of um, tax incentives and uh, other monetary incentives, but it's not it's not even at all. You know, different states give more mm -hmm. than others. Yes, and that was and that is actually my next advantage is that you can get tax credits <laughs> having a non a zero emission vehicle uh and in the article i was uh, uh reading it, it it said that you could get up to uh seventy five hundred dollars depending on you know what type of vehicle and what it has and you know but uh that's one of another advantages that it has and the last advantage that i have here is uh uh and this could be like in the cities, you can shorten your commute because by driving an EV, you can use the, uh, uh, what is that called? The uh, carpool lane, even if you're driving alone, because I guess they want you to get to your destination faster so you don't spend your battery in like a traffic jam or something like that, <laughs> which could be very bad. <laughs> yeah, people would not be so, so keen on that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then I have uh, uh, the disadvantages. I have uh, five disadvantages here. Uh, uh, the most EVs have a short range. We talked about that before. Uh, uh, 80 to 100 miles or 60 to 100 miles. And, uh, but only a few can go like 200 and 300 miles, the more, more luxury. Luxurious. We're talking having to buy a Tesla or something at that point. Yes, yes. And, and the prices on the Teslas, I was looking at their website and they are outrageous. I guess uh, they have not made a single dime on those cars yet because they're so expensive. Right. They, they're making them so that just to get rid of them. So, uh, so something interesting I found on that note, um, oh, since 2010, the battery production costs have actually decreased 80%. Wow. It's just that they were so expensive to begin with. Um, it's, It'll, it should continue to fall as they, as they improve the technology. I hope so. Yeah. Yeah, I hope so. Uh, let me see. Uh, recharging can take longer than just filling up with gas. Okay. Uh, the initial cost of an EV can be big. Some models can go to thirty to $40,000, and the luxury models can go up to $80,000. Yeah. Depending on the, all the uh, other perks that you want to put in it. Uh, charging stations are not always available. That's another problem. Uh, they are, are starting to move out from the, uh, in, into the, uh, in, in the cities and stuff like that. But when you get to like the rural areas, there's not much out there. And, you, and if you go out, you can, you can get stuck easily if you don't know where you're going. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and then there, there's not a, a big variety pack to pick from. Not like you go to a uh, uh, regular uh, auto dealer and you can pick and choose a tremendous amount of models. They only have specific models for that, and that's yeah. it. But I, I started looking into like a, if there was more trucks around, if there was more vans around, and they're starting to come out with that too. So it little by little, it's, it is spreading more, and it's uh, getting the variety is going to be uh, better. Yeah. Uh, uh, I believe that the EVs is the future. Uh, it has to be if we want to live in a world that uh, has a clean atmosphere. Uh, the diesel and gas trucks and cars, you know, they create so much uh, uh, greenhouse gases that, you know, it can be very damaging to the atmosphere. Uh, we now turn to this trend. You know, we don't know what the future will be. I mean, uh, I believe that the technology is there to make it better. Uh, electric vehicles and battery uh, are, are, are going to be uh, improved to uh, have a longer life and, and better uh, charging methods. 
So I think the technology is, is there or is almost there to have this done. Uh, but I also believe that EVs have not been promoted enough and that the consumer is not aware of their advantages and disadvantages. I think uh, that's true. The I word think has to get out. Yeah, I think yeah. there's also, as in the case with most renewable energies, disinformation yeah. being put out. Um, one thing that I had heard, um, particularly concerning, I think they use Tesla as the example, um, where people were saying you would have to drive an EV for about eight years to offset the environmental impacts of the production of the battery and the disposal of it. And this is again going back to that podcast I was talking about. And she's saying that this, it was taken from a single Swedish study where they went in and cherry picked the absolute worst case scenario and then are now dispersing this statistic. Yeah. yeah. Completely out of context. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's bad. That's too bad. But like I said, I think this is the future. Matter of fact, I, I wish I could buy one, you know? Yeah. Uh, because uh, it would be neat to just go around and uh, not waste any uh, gasoline and just plug it in. Much cheaper. I, uh, I kind of see it. Uh, um, it'd be even better if they could get it into public transportation. Like, what if you could run... What if you could run a train on one of these? Oh my God, yes. We have yes. a commuter train that goes up and down from DC. It goes, it, it, I mean, it's what, 54 miles down to the most southerly uh, station to, to well, have all of that, yeah, all that track and all those people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Running on electric, it'd be, it'd be incredible. Or uh, tractor trailers. There you go. All of that cargo shipping. Yeah, yeah. Well, like like uh, we talked about earlier about the the transits. I have an article here from uh, uh, Clean Technia that says that uh, by the year 2040, California is going to be all electric buses for their uh, uh, shuttles and, and trans public transportation. So that's going to bring, according to this article, uh, according to the electric vehicle research. The new regulation is part of a statewide effort to reduce emissions from the transportation sector, which accounts for 40% of the carbon dioxide emissions and up to 90% of the pollutants that cause smog. Wow. So when fully implemented, the regulation expects to reduce greenhouse gas emissions by 9 million metric tons from 220 to 200, uh, I mean, 2020 to 2050. And that's like uh, taking off like 4 million cars out of that's, off the road. That's incredible. That's amazing. And if they can do that and, the, and those calculations are correct, then it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful thing. And it's, it's also important to remember, you know, um, it's only as clean as the electricity that it's being charged with is. Um, so actually, I think we both use the energy department's website for some of our information yes. and they have a tool where you can actually go in and click on your state and it'll break down the power percentages that's, that, are, that are fueling your state. So you can see, you know, like how much of the electricity that I'm using is coal power as opposed to renewable energy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I'm, you know, whatever argument they might have against it as energy in general becomes cleaner. It's going to make the electric vehicles more accessible too. Nice. I agree. Okay. Okay. Well, that's all I have. <laughs> all right. I, uh, I think, I think we covered everything that we had talked about covering. Very nice. Very nice. Well, it was really nice. Well, talking you you gave me all the talking. That's <laughs> You have a fantastic night. Okay, but I have a question. Oh, yeah. How do I uh, how do I get it from you so I can post it? I don't know. Here, let me stop the I, video. I gotta go in. Let me see. Okay.